I am really glad uh, that Chris set the bar low at possibly hilarious for this presentation. <laughs> because I don't think in the history of a comedy act, one has ever had to follow redesigning death. <laughs> We've been through a lot this week. There's a lot to cover. I'm going to move rather quickly. We have had over 90 presenters, over 20 hours of main stage presentations. We've each been required to consume five pounds per person of single wrapped vegan snack foods shoved <laughs> down our throats. We had to do that. This theater is beautiful. The day I walked in, I was very impressed with the wood construction. Give it up for the theater. Until I saw this from Elora, and I'm no longer impressed. If it's not bamboo, it's not shit. We're not doing it. We're not doing it. Straight lines are for losers. Losers. I want to give it up for Ted Active and the crew up at Whistler. Give it up to them, please. They are a part of this. I see you guys. I have no idea what you do when we cut away from your feed. So I sent someone, I sent my producer and co-founder Brian Janosch up to Whistler. Here's what it looks like up there. All right? <laughs> just non-stop sex. Just non-stop. That's the active part of TED Active. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and of course, we all come here for the ideas, but we especially come here for the free material goods. Who among us does not remember the line for the gift cave? It was a little something like this. <laughs> or just trying to get a seat here. It's very, very special. I represent an entity known as Cultivated Wit. I am its co-founder and CEO. We take our name from Horace, who said, a cultivated wit, one that badgers less, can persuade all the more. And we try to apply the great power of humor to expand understanding, relatability, and make the world a bit more fun. My task here today is to do that for Ted. So welcome to Cultivated Wit's TED Recap. Let's go. We started off with a man who took to this stage and said that his technology was inspired by an evil machine sent back from the future to destroy all of us. <laughs> he said the words out loud himself, and I looked at his face the whole time, and he never smiled. You know why? Because he's not a man. He's a 3D printed monster. That's right. That's right. I see you, Mr. DeSimone. Nick Bostrom warned us, so warned us, he told us human level AI is coming. He put up this number centric chart. We have a lot of different learning styles. Not everybody is numerically inclined. So we translated this for you. This is what he was really saying to all of us. <laughs> and we heard him and we believed him. We were moved by the, the solid foundations of his arguments. And then this man came on stage after him. This machine apologist, Oren Etzioni, came up here and said, oh, nothing to worry about. The machines are our friends. The machines will empower us. We have nothing to fear from the machines. And we didn't get to see these two duke it out face to face. Ted needs more debate. So 2016, we're proud to announce Ted fights between these two. Bostrom <laughs> versus Etzioni. The future of humanity lies in the balance. Let's keep going. This was a really, really great moment when our stratospheric jumper took to the stage. And I was just wondering what is inside of that spacesuit? Who is inside of that spacesuit? It turns out Felix Baumgartner was inside of that spacesuit. <laughs> he carries him around like a little trophy, waving his jump in his face. It's great. It's great. <laughs> Oh, Abe Davis, you were great, you were great. Abe uh, told us how to recover sound by snooping on uh, plants and other objects in our life. And he expressed surprise that we would assume this would be used for surveillance. Why would you be surprised? You just showed us that the most pervasive items in the Western world, snack foods, are spying on us. <laughs> Move over, NSA, we gotta beware Frito-Lay. This is not good, this is not good. Neri Oxman, Helen had such a difficult time trying to capture your brilliance in formal job titles. And I can understand someone who says things like we came up with our own table of elements, editable biology. The, the setting for our next exploration was the solar system, a wearable, digestive system. And we mother Earth. A person who says that has only one job title, and that is goddess. Well done, Mary Oxman. You rule us all. 
you rule us all. We uh, heard from the president of the Elon Musk Fan Appreciation Society. <laughs> We laugh because we love. Who told us we're going to Mars? More specifically, a few thousand of us who can afford the $500,000 one-way ticket are going to Mars. And he also said an amazing thing about our, our uh, no concerns really, that we would travel to Mars with the earthly problems we've so perfected over the millennia. He said this, colonists will settle Mars just the way they came to America. <laughs> really though? I just see a lot of like Earth supremacists setting up Martian slave colonies and I don't like that particular future. I just gotta say, just gotta say, we laugh because we love. And now for a list of horrible things we've heard on the TED stage. <laughs> War with China is coming. Asteroids are gonna kill us all. Antibiotic resistant bacteria is here. Implicit bias and racism will get us. If it doesn't, over policing will get us. If it doesn't, under policing will get us. <laughs> if that doesn't do it, sexual violence or will it be domestic violence or will it be violent violence? <laughs> it's all coming for us. And most of all, anything that follows the phrase what if or just imagine. <laughs> Here's a rule of thumb. If a TED speaker says, just imagine, just don't. <laughs> A horrible, horrible future is about to unfold in your mind, masquerading as reality. And speaking of masquerades, at this very moment, the NCAA March Madness tournament is on. But this room doesn't really know much about that because we only had one talk addressing sports. One talk, and it made the great, fine, gladiatorial act of basketball look like this. <laughs> Well done, nerds. You won. You won. Dave Eagleman wore this, this powerful vest which allows us to extend our senses, and I wondered, what does uh, Chris's vest allow him to do? <laughs> we never heard about that. We never heard about your vest. What's that do, man? <laughs> Every time somebody gives a TED talk, he gets stronger. It's like the quickening. Amazing. Dave also said that this vest would allow us to feel the internet as if that were a good thing. <laughs> Let us remember Monica Lewinsky's talk. The internet is full of heinous and horrible people who need more empathy. So we propose a solution. Let us take this feelings vest. Let us strap in internet trolls filled with hate and subject them to humility at scale. It might look something like this as a result. <laughs> Pretty, pretty nasty stuff. And then we, the Batman himself, a man whose vision exceeds all of ours. He told us that blind people could hear everything that's going on in any room in the house. He told us his sonar gives him the power to perceive activity around corners. Move over, Frito-Lay. <laughs> Daniel Kish is coming your way. That's right, Batman is coming for you. Not to save you, not to save you. And Pop-Up Magazine, can we give it up for Pop-Up Magazine? I love this show. They sell out in five minutes when they do it in San Francisco, and, and we heard about an undercover teacher in North Korea. We heard about a brilliant Wall Street investment strategist behind the bars of San Quentin Prison. We heard about so many things, but the two that really popped out to me, if you want a celebrity's autograph, get that celebrity to sue you. They will have to sign the paperwork. Thank you so much, Chris Milk. And then the best of this session for me, the most memorable, Louis Armstrong has sex tapes. <laughs> Louis Armstrong had sex tapes. Thank you, Sam Green, for digging that out for all of us. Chris Burkhart. You know, there are, um, there are some ideas which really do have the power to change the world. And, and yours did. Um, because you convinced this black man that he wants to go surfing in the Arctic. <laughs> that is a massive feat. Man, that was just, I've not desired that ever, and now it's all I think about. <laughs> Let us discuss art for a moment. <laughs> Marina Abramovich, she showed us her facility that she's building in Hudson, New York. She had a lot of rooms where people could experience six hours at a time to get to the essence of what it meant to be human. She showed us the crystal room, but she didn't show us several other rooms that we dug up in the process. There's the blood room, naturally. <laughs> There's the sea room, just opens into a tempest. 
There's the normal room. It's just a normal room. We just get to hang out there for a while, which is really cool. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. It's like a fancy Upper West Side apartment. And then there's the room that's populated by blindfolded elite leaders of the world listening to Marina Abramovich talk about her room's room. <laughs> Circular economy. It's pretty great. It's pretty great. Now for a list of things you could only hear at TED. You all saw the cover of The Economist from a few weeks ago. <laughs> of course you did. That is an assumption worth spreading. <laughs> we saw massive applause for the photos of baby coral. All right, where my coral lovers at? Everywhere, they're everywhere. Uh, I ran into a physicist in the mall. <laughs> yeah, you did. Your brain is locked in a vault of silence and darkness inside your skull. Okay, that's true, yep. For those of you who are zoning junkies, <laughs> that works here. I was raised by lesbian wolves in the heart of the Rocky Mountains. Dustin Yellen, I believe you when you say that. Oh my goodness. And then this man. This happened, and his name was Chuck Berry, which I was not expecting. <laughs> this, only at TED. Bill Gates is gonna be available to meet you in the Ebola room. <laughs> only at TED. Only at TED. Um, I'm gonna take a quick water break. I'm gonna show you a video, just a little video in interlude to hold me over while I sit. Touching, touching. <laughs> we just had this, this very powerful session. We heard the calmest man in the world tell us to get angry, uh, which is beautiful. And, 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 and Satyarthi, he also uh, has great accomplishments. He, he freed 83,000 children from child labor and slavery. And it made me reflect on, on what I've done today. Um, <laughs> I woke up, and, uh, and when the alarm went off, I didn't press snooze. I just followed through on that, because I, I believe in that, right? Anger to idea to action, that was my action today. Dame Ella, uh, when your nearest uh, source of help is in space, you are officially a badass. That is the textbook <laughs> definition of badass. Aloe Black, you're the man, you're the man, you're the man. That was just moving to tears, messed up my makeup. Thank you so much for that. That was really great. And Sophie, the laughs. Can we just laugh for Sophie one more time? Just <laughs> put on a laugh for Sophie. Some of those people did sound like they were being physically injured uh, or trying to lure duck in to hunt them. It was very, very beautiful. Roman Mars. Roman Mars. 99% invisible, very visible on this stage. Roman channeled his inner crotchety old man in a rant that when the TED.com people post this online, I hope they call it, get your flag off my lawn. <laughs> We've done something very special for you, Roman. We noticed that TED does not have a flag, and so we made one just for you. This is the official, <laughs> official flag of TED. Adhering to all the rules you set forth for us. Because design matters. <laughs> Martine. Martine, Martine, Martine. So much. Satellite radio, he invented that. Fatherhood, she rocked that. Cure for a rare disease, she developed that. Obsessive desire to preserve her love for her wife in the form of Mind clones, mind files, and cryogenics. Yo, stop that. <laughs> no. You had us and I cured disease. Why do you have to go make a Black Mirror episode out of your TED talk? <laughs> Being a 48, maybe. What happened to 1 through 47? We don't hear about that. We don't hear about that. That was great. That was great. <laughs> And Anand Girdadas. Where is Anand? Is Anand in the room? Give it up for Anand Girdadas. Oh, this talk about these two Americas, it was beautiful. And I'm proud, I'm a, I'm a friend, and I'm so 
please, but it was almost the perfect TED Talk. It was, the hair was perfect. It was glistening. It was quaffed just so. <laughs> but you made an interesting choice. You told the TED audience that they might be part of the problem. You don't do that at TED. <laughs> You tell the TED audience they're the totality of the solution. They're the exceptional visionaries. We have no future without them. Next time, better luck. So very close, so very close. <laughs> we appreciate you, Anna. We appreciate you. The Aster Gates <laughs> ideas and practice together. He said, I believe beauty is a basic service. <laughs> and it's true. And, and Roman Mars thought he was talking about flags when he said that, and so he was very excited about it as well. I just wanted an excuse to show the flag again, so you're welcome, everybody. Sarah Jones! Woo! Sarah Jones, you could have your own week of programming. You could have 45 speakers all played by Sarah Jones. I would pay $8,500 for it, and it would be worth every dime. Sarah 2016, create that, make that, we will fund that. So good. And to close this out, uh, you know, the TED Prize was a beautiful moment that brought us all together. We thought we'd give out our own prizes. These are our Cultivated with TED Awards. Uh, for the best way to prevent your son from driving, that goes to Chris Ermson, who invented a self-driving car just so his teenage kid wouldn't drive himself. That was very creative. For the session that made my job the hardest, I want to give it up to Just and Unjust for just having such heart, <laughs> such beauty. And if I made jokes about that session, I look like an asshole, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Uh, the Thank You For Not Killing Us All award goes to Louis Dartel, who started an open fire in the midst of a lumber yard. That was a really interesting choice. That was a really interesting choice. Gratuitous use of old photos, shirtless photos, of course, goes to our friend Jason Padgett. That was too long ago. We get it. You were in high school. You don't have to keep showing us those six packs. Joke of the week. This is a, probably the most meaningful thing we could say from this stage because it doesn't emanate from me being on the stage right now. This absolutely goes to Dame Steve. You can always tell ambitious women from the shape of our heads. They're flat from being padded passionizingly. Perfectly delivered. Most enviable arms goes to Bill T. Jones. Oh! Taking tips from Michelle Obama, I see. And uh, the not one, but two black women astrophysicist award goes to the TED Fellows Program. The TED Fellows Program. <laughs> the TED Fellows Program is like a Shonda Rhimes production. Just all black women all day, every day. Two black astrophysicist women have not been on stage since the official gathering of the National Association of Black Astrophysicist Women. <laughs> Thank you, Ted Fellow. Sincerely, it's the future. I love it. I love it. Uh, the best non-meeting of expectations. We all thought we were going to get something. We got so much more. Sincerely, Esther Perel. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh. And the wise old soul of 2015 award. This goes to a person who embodies tradition, who embodies age, who, who carries gravitas as if it were the weight of the actual physical world on his back. Obviously, this is 11-year-old Joey Alexander. <laughs> Woo! Amazing, amazing. And a special thanks. Uh, we've heard this a lot before. It looks like a solo production. This was very much a team effort. So I want to give a special round of applause to Brian Janos, my co-founder and producer, to Craig Cannon and Adam Peterson, our partners in San Francisco, who did so much visual work on this, and everyone at TED. And let's just leave on a bit of heights, descent into humility, which we should all carry with us. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Congratulations, TED. Truth and done.